Hello patrons, so this video is going to be about a poppet of the hedgerow, poppets of the hedgerow connecting to hedgerow using poppet magic. Now something I wanted to put to you guys I'm thinking of doing, as long as it's okay with everybody, is I'm going to actually make the videos early access so that they will go up on YouTube eventually, maybe like two weeks to a month after you guys have already had those videos uh, because um, people aren't really re-watching them or anything and I thought it's kind of a shame to like lose that content as I spend time recording these so as long as it's alright with everybody I'm gonna uh, make the old content available on YouTube and everyone on Patreon will have these as early access but the podcasts and everything else will be exclusive still so let me know what you think guys let me know and I will take that all on board. So first you can say I have managed to cut myself today and burn myself today. It's been a really great day today, not so much. But today we are talking about something which I freaking love, which is Poppet at the Hedgerow Magic. So the first Poppet and the main example I'm going to show you, I don't actually have a wax example to show you, but we can talk about it, is this beauty. Isn't she gorgeous? I can't take full credit for this because she was initially a creation from the people over at Witchinwood who just stopped uh, selling and I'm a little bit devastated. <laughs> um, now I uh, basically made her my own or uh, there's a story behind it, um, but she didn't come looking quite like this. Um, but I'm going to talk to you about what the different components are. We're going to talk about her story and then why it matters in terms of connecting to hedgerow magic. So she is a black thorn poppet. Uh, she has crow feathers at the back here. Now, I believe she came with one crow feather and the rest I've added. So I added uh, much more. Um, I added, so there was a front row of three and a back row of three. And she was, she was this complete tafta here um, all the way and she actually has ribbon that I did. So there's two kinds of ribbon that you can see in a bit. Um, I'll get a bit closer. She came with a little charm here and then the additional jewelry I created for her. She has crow f uh, feet here and a feather here, which she came with. The bark is blackthorn and some black, blackthorn at the back. Little tafta that she came with. And so the, the the model came and I had one of these a while back and I asked them to make me another one because uh, when I had to move I couldn't bring my other one with me and or I, I mean there are things that I forgot there are things that I just couldn't fit in the suitcases that sort of thing so she came and I loved her and she was sat on the altar and somehow the side of her caught on fire um, I don't know if it was another half messing about with like candles in there or what, but like she got burnt um, and it kind of destroyed her. The, this tafta on this side. I managed to save her um, and I was a little bit heartbroken and I could feel that her energy had depleted or was low because of it. So we, I first of all bound her back up with thread. Um, which is underneath and you can't see it now and that was very much like binding her wounds up with this thread and, and left her on the altar to absorb some energy for a little bit longer and then we went about rectifying her so she felt beautiful and i am a strong believer in puppets like this they definitely have their own spirit or the spirit that is connected to them through the magical work that you do they they become their own magical tool with their own spirit and the next video is actually going to be activating a spell to um, activate and breathe almost spiritual life into the spirit of a puppet and that will be the next video up but for this one we're going to just be discussing her and what it means and, and why you would have one and, and all the rest of it and a bit of a show and tell and a little bit of an explain really show and tell blackthorn puppet of the hedgerow so after I had bound her up and she had been, uh, the thread was various different colours and obviously wasn't particularly fitting with her energy and theme. So she has two lots of binding. She has, you can kind of see the ribbon underneath a little bit on that side where it's 
it's moved over a little bit. We'll try and move that back a bit, but it's a little bit better because the light's coming through, I guess. Um, so she has these the very thin ribbon on this side, and then the thicker ribbon down below, and she has a kind of like a, a nice tail going on here with the ribbon. Um, and I also created her uh, shoulder pad, or it is a, it was a shoulder pad. It's kind of moved to the neck area, but that's like a protective over the shoulder warrior vibe. Um, she also has this, these beads off her headdress, and this is a beetle wing. And then down here, she has a black thorn that I have picked, um, weapon, if you like, on her belt, which is tucked into the folds. So this is how she looks. She's very, very strong energy. Uh, black thorn energy is feared and revered in equal measure to start with. Now you can use blackthorn for cursing and um, the traditional blasting rods uh, that are they're quite Celtic in orientation are made from blackthorn but they, you know they're English, English folklore, Celtic, there's, there's interplay there. So you can use blackthorn for cursing, it is a thorn tree, uh, it can pierce, it can harm but to be honest with you all magic can and this is something that I always find bizarre to me a little bit because all magic can be used painfully all magic and so um saying one tree is evil or one tree is aggressive more than so than any other is a bit strange to me uh blackthorn is definitely a hedgerow energy it's a liminal energy if you were in the top tier you've already read a little bit about blackthorn this month and so these videos kind of tailor um to those and kind of wrap that energy up so she can of course be used to attack should i wish it or need it um and obviously she has crow claws this one i i found it very interesting that she came and her uh, claws are very dance orientated almost right because this one's outstretched and then this one curls around and there is a very definite movement here there's an as above so below kind of vibe to that um, as with her. So Blackthorn is the protector of the hedgerow and the, the other world, the realm of Fae, and you have to exchange blood in order to walk through the, the barrier place to buy Blackthorn traditionally to enter the other world. And as such, it for me, it has very much more organic properties to Blackthorn. It has a warrior vibe, it has a sacrifice vibe, it has uh, a very protective warrior vibe, it has the kind of natural order and natural balance, almost satiny kind of energies to it. Um, and so I really wanted this to reflect in uh, adding my own energies and to and kind of healing her through um, her trial by fire that, that happened in the beginning, which is interesting because for that to have happened to a spirit doll, a lot of people might have then been like, well, she doesn't want to be here. She caught on fire. Um, I am getting rid of her or passing her on or dismantling her or something. Um, now you can make your own spirit dolls like this, by the way, completely from scratch. It's just that I trust the people at Witchingwood um, and they are Welsh which is a lot of my heritage. So I liked the idea of merging my energies in theirs. Now, as for getting rid of her, I was never gonna do that, especially seeing as they no longer make any for one. So logistic reasons, but also the fact that I feel that trial by fire is a part of a warrior energy that is befitting for Blackthorn. If it had been maybe like a poppet to like a love poppet, an Aphrodite poppet, then maybe, but it's not, it's a more organic poppet. It's a poppet of warrior, trial by fire, trial by combat, healing through wounds and shadow work. And Blackthorn as a poppet can definitely be used for shadow work and journeying to the underworld both in terms of journeying within the self and dealing with difficulties and having a protector protectress sorry uh, over the <laughs> she's got a very uh feisty personality and i'm a strong believer that puppets like this definitely do uh come with their own spirit come with their own energy that attaches and, and kind of like spirit housing um and works alongside you in order to help you along the spiritual path as a protector as a guide um communicator messenger all these things and blackthorn is definitely more organic for me very very much so some people make puppets with the very specific intention of them of the creating their own kind of thought thought 
thought form birthing of an energy of spirit into a poppet. Um, thought forms or egregores are thought to generally have a limited lifespan though and I don't feel that that is the case with uh, spirits that are attached to these uh, whether they come from outside from inside within or without is largely irrelevant it can be all of these of course if we're being fluxy about it it doesn't have to be one or the other now with her having crow energy within um, she can see outside of time the same way the medicine of the crows can prophetic prophecy again more organic so she's for, she can forewarn against dangers and pains and things of that nature. And she's very queenly, um, which is why she has her own kind of crown. And I th thought that was kind of Celtic feeling, although the, obviously the beetle um, here is not necessarily very Celtic, but I kind of liked that. And it kind of wove in and added a few highlighting colours to add a little green and blue, a little, little bit of shape-shifting kind of vibe to her as well. So this is kind of one form of hedgerow uh, puppet that you can use, create yourself or kind of combine with other people who maybe are better suited than if you really can't create certain types of things. I don't think there's any shame in, in getting something from someone else who truly knows what they're doing and means what they're doing and, and feels that at a heart level. Now, in terms of hedgerow, <coughs> Blackthorn, of course, is per perfect. And there are others as well. And they can help you journey through the liminal journeys at the hedgerows. That's very important. They can be your guide and your protector for that purpose. And so if they are made from elements of the hedgerow, I think that binds it really well to that purpose specifically. If you wanted one specifically for that, you could do that really well. Now, I've actually put them away, which was really not helpful, um, but I have some little gingerbread men molds if you like metal molds and i can use them quite frequently for wax poppets which i've shown how to do on the channel before um, and if you're creating a wax poppet which you can do simply and easily yourself for hedgerow journeying or liminal in between spaces you would take some uh, wax and then you would fill the poppet with he hedgerow herbs like or flowers or roots uh, like the one suggested earlier in this month so then you would drip, 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 drip into your little mold, or you can just do it loose on some baking papers, help it lift off. Uh, drip, 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 and then layer your herbs in, layer your intention in, creating an energy and awakening that energy within as you go through it. So those are some of the difference. Well, there's two different ways. You can also do the fabric way if you like. Uh, I personally prefer the wax or the, uh, this is kind of like a, wood underneath here um, with a mixture of different fabrics and things you can do the the plain fabric one if you like but i find that something that i quite i quite like the the vibration of is actually if you can either um taking your puppet to the under under well taking your puppet to the under yes taking your puppet to the hedgerow um and burying it there for a little bit or having it there with you while you're doing work and the fabric can pick up dirt and things which is the only downside of the fabric but you can still do that um if you're going to bury uh your wax on make sure your wax is biodegradable and um is not paraffin and is vegan ideally um for or vegetarian and it isn't going to interfere with the ecosystem um if you can't guarantee that then i would take your poppet um place it under the hedgerow do some connective work there see the, what the communications you're getting and all this good stuff and then take it with you have it on your altar and then it's a touchstone back to that hedgerow energy which is something we talked about in the podcast if you can't go to a hedgerow, um, then you're going into journey space, you're going into meditation, you're creating that puppet ready for that journey, and then you're taking it there in, in circle or ritual or however you best connect to those energies for you, and that kind of infusing that into the hedgerow puppet. You should probably do that whether or not you go and visit as well, because it's, it's nice to do that. It's, it gives a good spiritual grounding of that spirit as well as a physical one. Um, but if you can only do the spiritual one for logistic reasons again, then do that by all means. I'm trying to think if that's everything we need to cover in this particular video.
If you're making your own, uh, I would let your intuition guide you as to whether you wanted feathers or talons or things that you have found at the hedgerow, spikes, uh, thorns, uh, particular dried flowers. You can work all of these things into your own pocket. There is no right or wrong answer. And this is something that I've been thinking about because I don't think a lot of people talk about using them for journeying, particularly in the hedgerow. But if you can tailor it to your local hedgerow, all the better. I think that works really well. So that's going to be it for this particular video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Many blessings and I'll see you for the next one.